going to be on prostate health. And uh, we'll just get this out. It's kind of funny when we talk about female health, it seems like anyone will talk about her health anywhere. When we talk about guy health, it's like, I'm not a prostate girl. Really? <laughs> a what? <laughs> right? We're going to be talking about the prostate though tonight. Not prostrate, right? So prostate is an organ and prostrate is a position of lying, right? Laying face down. So why are we talking about prostrate? We're talking about prostate. There's a difference. It's funny when I have people come in and say, yeah, I had prostate cancer. <laughs> That's when a guy gets falling asleep and can't get up. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> prostate. What is the prostate? Prostate is an organ that has two primary responsibilities. Located below the bladder, the prostate is the size of a walnut. And that walnut has two responsibilities. It aids the bladder in holding back in the urethra, urine, and then the, from the testicles come back the seminesical, uh, the semen vesicles and they actually join back up in here and this mixes with a gland that releases uh, fluid to create semen. Okay, So it also helps to maintain erection and that is the function of the prostate. When we look at the prostate, prostate function and prostate health is not something limited to old men. Okay, Prostate is an organ that's actually very commonly uh, affected by using antihistamines in children. And what we see <coughs> is those antihistamines can create a permanent enlargement to the prostate in children and in some studies have been shown to be the cause of uh, prostatic enlargement and bladder irritation in children under the age of four. Okay. The prostate, again, should be the size of a walnut, should have the consistency or feeling of this area, the thenar eminence of your palm. So when you hold your hand in a fist like this and you press on that area of the hand, that's what the prostate should actually feel like. Okay. Um, so when you have what's called a DRE, or digital rectal exam, what you're actually feeling for is the prostate to be the size of a walnut and basically have the shape of a peach when you feel there should be a sulcus down the center of that back side of the prostate and it should feel even on both sides, okay, almost like a little peach or a small, uh, again the size of the walnut but have that type of a, a little dent or demarcation, okay. When we look at prostate then, prostate also has, again with, because the urethra passes through and empties the bladder, prostate then when it's enlarged can actually put pressure on the sphincter muscles of the bladder and cause urgency. Okay, so that's the feeling of, well I can't get the flow to start but I feel like I've got to go and then it stops prematurely or I can't void completely. So we'll see fellows that will say, yeah my streams really interfere. Very common though in our area are young boys that have bladder spasms and therefore will be called nocturnal enuresis or bedwetting at night. Bladder spasms. And what we see is a heavy metal toxicity in the bladder and most commonly is copper in our area and then it forces the prostate to retain zinc. And what happens is during the night, zinc is needed as a cofactor for insulin utilization for blood sugar handling. And what happens is during the night, the child will relax and that bladder spasm will release and they'll wet their bed. Okay? So what we have to do is detoxify copper, increase their zinc, and then also treat simultaneously a yeast infection in the body because the yeast is an overgrowth as a protection against the copper and then we'll actually be able to treat the boys with the bladder spasms. These are the boys that are bedwetting at 8 years old, 9 years old, 10 years old, 11, 12. That's pretty serious when 
as a scout master, I'm trying to take a boy on a camp and he has a bedwetting problem. Okay? Um, there was a boy that we worked with several years ago that came in. When we stroked his palm, he had a grasping reflex in his palm and his hand would come into almost a claw. And uh, we made a simple adjustment for him and worked with his brain and he was 12 years old. He's actually at that time he was 13 and had never had a dry night. And we did one little adjustment for him, fixed his brain, and he's able to go on a scout camp. Then, he didn't have any bedwetting. Then he grew his hair out. One of the things that I showed him is he's had one of these special hairdos where his hair would get into his eyes and we showed him that when he's flipping his head, he's actually fouling up his brain and his neck. And so before we would make the correction, he had to go get his hair cut. Then he grew his hair out over the next couple of months, started flipping his hair again, and he said, Mom, guess what? I had a wet night. you got to take me back to the doctor. So he came in, he was doing this, and what do you think we said? Get a haircut. Get a haircut. So he got his haircut, came back in, we fixed him. And to my knowledge, uh, it's been several years ago. He's been dry nights since then. That's pretty exciting. Okay? So... Just a couple of quick things there just for the children. Now let's talk about adults and how do we evaluate the prostate. <laughs> Remember that in men's health, every year that we pass the age of 50, okay, or then if we actually look at it every decade past the age of 50, actually equates to the percentage of likelihood of us developing prostate cancer. Okay? So once I'm 50 years old, I'm 50% likely to develop prostate cancer. By the time I am 60, 70, and therefore 80% likely by the time I hit 80 to develop prostate cancer. And that's the interesting thing is we've shown in other classes, and we've talked in other classes, what is also simultaneously going down. So as this rate increases, what's also simultaneously going down? We talked about it a couple of times before. You remember? Our stomach acid concentrations, and so the pH of our body is changing, and the likelihood of developing then an infection in the prostate is also increasing, as is then the likelihood of developing the cancer. Okay? So as our pH changes in our body, and our body becomes more acidic, the environment then becomes more friendly to a bacteria growing and settling, especially in the prostate. So, one of the things that we want to look for then in evaluating the prostate includes what we talked about already, the digital rectal exam at ERE. We talked about what that feel should be. The next thing that we look at is a PSA. And whenever we do PSA, we always want to do the PSA total, and then we want to do what's called a percent free. PSA. The reason for this is PSA total, remember when we drew the picture before, here's the bladder, the prostate's below that, from the testicles come back up the uh, seminal vesicles, and then we actually look right here behind the prostate is the rectum. And when we look at this, just voiding stools can actually press against an enlarged prostate. When I talk about enlarged prostates, um, there's one fellow that we had talked about in the past who had a prostate when we checked it was the size of a grapefruit. Okay? When we looked at his palms, his palms had callusing on them. They were almost a quarter inch thick. And when we first visited with him, he was a manual laborer and I said, my goodness, I've never seen calluses that large and his wife said well that's not from him doing labor it's from him sitting on the toilet for over three hours trying to push out a stool squeezing the toilet seat and that's how he developed those calluses okay but with a prostate the size of a grapefruit you can see in that proximity how that would completely block the ability to avoid stool okay and that was a very very serious case um, when we look at this though we've we've seen prostates that go from that grapefruit, that was probably the largest one that I've ever uh, examined, and then smaller, and we'll see them usually about the size of a tangerine or a, uh, a small uh, nectarine or apricot, okay, so they get large. Um, and one of the questions that we ask about prostate health is, is there difficulty avoiding stool or does it feel like I have an incomplete bowel movement? 
do I have pain at night on the insides of my heels? Okay. Do I have restless legs? Restless legs are also a sign of that because when the prostate enlarges, it also causes then inflammation along the blood vessels there in the rectal area, which cause then hemorrhoids, which can cause then restless legs. The body will try to move or try to escape that sensitive area, and sometimes you'll notice restless legs with that. Okay, it's uncomfortable, especially in different positions lying. When we look at this then, PSA totals can be affected therefore by simply voiding stool before you go in and have your PSA checked. And it will stay elevated for up to 12, 24 hours. Okay? PSA can also be elevated by sexual activity because the PSA or the prostate is involved during that time of activity. So what we look at is what we call a percent free PSA and always request that when we're really looking at a person who has a prostate hypertrophy, infection, or cancer. And the reason that we do that is if the percent free PSA is greater than 12% and even better in the literature 16% plus, the more likely we have what's called by benign prostatic hypertrophy. Okay? If it's less than 8%, <coughs> so we want it to be not less than, excuse me, greater than greater than 12%. If it's less than 8%, we're most likely looking at prostate cancer. So this gives us a more reliable marker than does PSA alone. Okay? So coupled, it gives us a better window into the percentage of what is that PSA most likely. Uh -huh. The PSA again is the prostate specific antigen. Let me write that out for us. Because um, again, I don't want to over assume that everybody's familiar. Okay, so DRE again is a digital rectal exam. And no, for your teenager that's coming in to get his uh, physical, that's not the turn your head and cough. All right, the PSA is the prostate specific. Antigen. Okay? And that's what we're looking at there. Okay? Please. Is that measured now in a whole number then, the PSA, as opposed to a percentage and a percentage free? No, they'll still use uh, some dot. It'll be like 2.2, 2.4, 2.6. And then the percents, though, will come back as whole numbers 12%, 16%. And the higher it gets, then the more likely it's prostate as benign prosthetic hypertrophy. Okay? What is something that's benign? It's not cancer. Boy, we need to give our board an adjustment. <laughs> or maybe some MSM and glucosamine. Right, Sterling? Okay, so that's what we're looking at, and the CA there is cancer, okay?